FNIR stands for Functional Near Infrared Spectroscopy, and it's a way to look at brain activation indirectly. Um, and the idea is the same as fMRI. So you shine light in through the brain into the skull, and the light is reflected back out. Um, so the best way to show this is just on a sensor. Um, and so this is our custom FNIR sensor. I'll get uh, into why we built it later. Um, but it just looks at one part of the brain. So it's very simple compared to the full head EEG systems and FNIR systems you normally see. So you can see there are a couple of LEDs. Um, so they shine light into the brain. And then there's an optical detector. So the light shines into the brain and is reflected back out differently at a different wavelength depending on the oxygen content of the brain underneath. And when a part of the brain is more active, it needs to draw more resources, so it pulls in more oxygen. So that's a, a sort of indirect measure of looking at neuronal activation, is looking at where that oxygen is being pulled to in the brain. FNIRS has been around for decades, but the reason that we developed our sensor is because when we started working on our human state assessment projects, nothing this small existed. Everything was full head, you had wires hanging off the back, um, and we wanted to go out and assess human states in situations where people were going about their regular training activities. So situations like a simulation center in a hospital where people are working on mannequins or they're out in a field running around the woods clearing patients out of the way. So we developed this much smaller, more portable sensor that would fit into standard issue gear like a surgeon's cap or a helmet. So right now we have a new project where we're looking at pilots in flight simulators to look at how, um, look at their human state, so their cognitive burden or their awareness while they're handling a new aircraft. And we're trying to correlate those quantitative measures, so our FNIRs, with their subjective ratings of which aircraft were more difficult or less difficult to handle. So this allows us to do things like take this into testing and evaluation labs, they're designing new methods of display, new cockpit designs, and testing which one is better before they put millions of dollars into developing them. So they'll have people practice with them and then look at, ask them how difficult it was. We wanna allow them also to look at a quantitative measure of their state and then pick a winner and say, this one is clearly better. It's either less burdensome or more burdensome, depending on you know if they're bored or overloaded. And then that's the one that they develop further. Another place I think that this could go is in the classroom or in tutoring. So you can look at the state of the students in your class, especially if you have a very large class of students and say, this person's paying attention. This person didn't understand what I just taught. We need to go back. That person over there is bored, so I need to move on more quickly. So any situation in which assessing the cognitive burden of the individual or um, the awareness or the fatigue of the individual is a situation that FNIRs could be used to help that person with their job.